Just wanted to talk today about uh, recent market momentum, some thoughts on the market overall, and linking these through to some recent and up upcoming publications, uh, and including some screens that I think you might find useful into the end of financial year. On the screen, hopefully you can see that um, uh, chart there just showing trends in segment momentum. I've found this chart useful on the way through both the pandemic and then the recovery through the vaccine discovery and, and onwards. Uh, just looking at, um, with the market driven so much by momentum, it's it's handy to look for the leaders and the laggards, and it's certainly helped me call out some of the mining segments um, as underperformers that have since played catch up. So, just to talk about the market overall, um, the market here is back to its uh, record high or its pre-COVID high. Uh, it's pretty amazing, I find, that the S and P 500 is a full 26% higher than it was uh, when it hit its high as it entered COVID into uh, February 2020. And I just wanted to call out some of the, um, I wouldn't say red flags, but points of concern for mine um, around that performance. So valuations across the board are stretched. They have been for some time. It's easy to argue that the markets are, are priced on a relative basis at the moment, not an absolute one. Um, but it is going to be harder for certain segments of the market to cycle what were extraordinarily extraordinarily strong uh, FY20 periods in, in segments like retail, for example. Um, it's conspicuous that the recovery, both the economic recovery and the market recoveries, um, both among the strongest on record, have occurred without any real material drawdown period. I think the worst we've gotten since the, the bottom has been about an 8% drawdown, um, if that. So, um, that's a real departure from comparable economic recoveries in the past and very strong stock market recoveries in the past. Um, Noxie is saying that the uh, market in the US is moderately overvalued. Um, and I'll just call out the fact, I mean, it's not a driver, but seasonally the period from July through November is um, a flatter period for the S&P 500 uh, as compared to the inverse, which might help uh, or might influence the traders out there. So um, looking a bit tricky overall, but there are always risks and opportunities within this. So the charts I'm about to show you will, will circulate after the meeting, obviously, but um, those cyclical segments that are standing out and where we do still see uh, material upside, and I'll just call out some names here, in energy, uh, we're actually looking at upweighting exposure in the model portfolios. Adrian's got a really strong view on the oil price, um, upside risk there, um, perhaps through $100 per barrel. Um, that's really driven by you know, supply constraints and pent up consumer demand uh, combined with strong economic recoveries. So looking at Santos there, uh, transport still lagging behind, you know, Qantas, um, uh, Horizon, uh, Brambles is probably the lower risk uh, option in, in that bucket uh, with material upside. Travel and tourism, uh, corporate travel, obviously the, the favorite there, packaging, um, been a bit sluggish. Um, Amcor is the one that stands out there. Among transport infrastructure, Sydney Airports is a, is a high conviction call. Um, still like Whitehaven in coal and, and A2 Milk's been through the ringer, but uh, perhaps one for the, the rebound sort of traders there. But um, just to call out what might look vulnerable in the short term, this does dovetail with a publication we've got coming out this week. Um, the, the analysts in the online, retail and, and metals and mining, I think we're calling out iron ore and some of the pure plays there. Um, they might struggle short term just as a function of how strongly they've overperformed coming into this period. So I'll just touch on that again shortly. Just to break that a bit down a bit further, just looking at leaders and laggards across the entire market, and I won't call this out, but it is conspicuous that it, it really is hard to find stocks that have lagged behind or quality names that have lagged behind since the, the announcement of the Pfizer vaccine in, in mid-November uh, last year. In fact, the most of the laggards are among the gold segment and there's a handful of mining services stocks in there um, as, a, as a reversal of, the, of that outperformance in the gold segment through that uh, market volatility. So again, another sign that it's, it's actually quite hard to find um, broad underperforming segments across the market. Um, as I, as I mentioned, uh, looking at June 30 uh, drops this week, looking at ideas that may have, may or may not have, um, you know, had end of financial year selling or tax loss selling contribute to weak market weakness. Um, just overlapping with some ideas that we think 
um, fit as, as solid buy ideas anyway. So there's a handful of names in there that are, are in our current best ideas list. Um, you know, some of the small caps, Max 7, Frontier, Volpara, um, Dal Bay's in there. Um, Sydney Airports and APA have, have been both best ideas and model portfolio stocks along the way for the last couple of years. So um, I'll let you read that one at your leisure. 